Hey everyone, Mr. DVB here. So welcome back to my weekly series in which every single week, or two months in this case, I'll be comparing two films together to discuss which one I believe is the better movie overall. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Marvel's newest film, Captain Marvel, versus DC's newest film, Shazam, to discuss which one I think is the better superhero movie. Now, as always, this list is going to contain five categories, and there will be spoilers in this video for both films. There won't be as many spoilers for Shazam as the movie doesn't come out for two weeks, and I do want to hold back on some things, but there is some stuff that I do want to talk about if I'm going to discuss the characters in that kind of stuff. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this video. So, in Shazam, we follow Billy Batson, who is a 14-year-old foster child who finds himself coming across a wizard who grants him the powers of Shazam, where he basically can become an adult superhero and can choose to use his powers for the good of you know, saving the world or whatever. Now, in this movie, I absolutely love the character of Billy Batson. When he's a teenager, I just found he was likable and he worked really well with the other characters in the film, but it was when he became Shazam, when he became the adult, that's when things just got fantastic. I think Zachary Levi absolutely killed it in this role as a 14-year-old inside of a grown man's body. That sounds really weird, but it's true. He did a really good job portraying a 14-year-old child. He has the mannerisms, that kind of humor that you would get from a 14-year-old boy if they could do adult-like things. There was a lot of moments in the movie that were played very comedically, and it worked extremely well. I thought the jokes landed most of the time in this movie, especially when, like I said, he's just doing adult-like things. It was very funny. Everybody in the theater was laughing. And besides just the humor that came from Shazam's character, there was a lot of development as well. In this movie, Billy obviously is a foster child. His mom, um, lost him at the fair when he was younger, which I thought was kind of cheesy at first, but they explain it later on. And then in this movie, he discovers a true feeling of family with his foster family that adopted him. And I just thought it was a very sweet storyline. It made you care for his character. They gave him some growth in that sense because he was truly adapting to this new environment. And then of course, there's the whole storyline you know, where when he becomes Shazam at first, he's just this very cocky and arrogant kid. He's not really using his powers for good, he's using them for very stupid things, and it's over the course of the film that he kind of discovers that with great power comes great responsibility, and he needs to use his powers for good to help people in, you know, bad situations. I really like that storyline, I thought it worked well. There's also many moments when he's taking on the villain, and he's a very cowardice person. He's trying to run away and hide, and then, you know, later on, he ends up, you know, standing up for himself, taking on this villain, and it just showed a lot of of growth of his character, so they handled the character of Billy Batson very well in my opinion, and he was a great protagonist. Now on the other hand, we have Captain Marvel, and in this movie we follow Brie Larson as Carol Denvers, who is a Kree warrior who finds herself fighting alongside with the Kree to take on the other, you know, alien race known as the Skrulls, and there's just this big war going on between these two different species. At the same time, she also completely forgets her past, and she has these little tiny memories that pop into her head every once in a while, and she really wants to find out who she truly is. Now, in my opinion, Brie Larson's performance in this movie wasn't exactly the best. She seemed very stoic. She wasn't really capable of showing any emotion in this movie. I didn't like the overly sarcastic kind of character presence that they gave her in this film. It was pretty annoying, and it's been played before with other characters in the MCU, but just done a lot better before. So, I didn't really think Brie Larson's performance in this movie was all that great. On top of that, there wasn't much character development for her in this movie. Like I said, the basic storyline with her character is that she's trying to remember her past. And when she does, she doesn't really change as a character. She still feels the same to me. There wasn't really any emotional moments where her friend sees her for the first time in like six years. And you know, like there's this big moment where these two are reuniting um, and it's really emotional. They didn't do that. They kind of played it in more of a jokish manner, which really annoyed me. That should have been a serious moment. So it didn't have that feeling of character growth. And whenever Captain Marvel is in a bad situation in this movie, she gets out of it by becoming stronger. She doesn't really have to sacrifice anything to win these situations. You watch other MCU films, characters are always having to kind of learn a lesson or find out something about themselves that they didn't know before in order to, you know, win this battle against the villain. In Black Panther, you had T'Challa, um, you know, fighting Killmonger and he uses the train station which, you know, turns off his suit. So he's basically sacrificing himself so that he can gain the upper hand in the fight. In Thor, Thor has completely lost his powers. He is this really cocky person and he has to learn to be humble so that he can gain his power back. These characters have to go through these certain situations in order to become a better person, and Captain Marvel just 
got more powerful. There really wasn't any character development or arc there. So as you guys can tell, this round is very easy for me. It is going to go to Shazam. He was just a much more likable character, and I thought the portrayal that was given by Zachary Levi was way better than the performance that Brie Larson gave as Captain Marvel. Okay. What are your superpowers? Superpowers, dude? I don't even know how to pee in this thing. <laughs> Moving on to round two, we have the supporting cast. So in Shazam, obviously, like I said earlier, Billy Batson is a foster child. So the majority of the supporting cast members in this movie are his foster family. And the standout character in this group was by far Jack Dylan Grazer's Freddy. He stole the show in all the scenes that he was in. He was very funny and comedic. I really loved the relationship that him and Billy had. It was the best part of the movie, in my opinion. I just really enjoyed seeing this kid on screen. I think Jack Dylan Grazer has a really fantastic on-screen comedic presence, whether it's in this or it. He's a really good actor, and he was definitely one of the highlights of this movie. But besides him, the other supporting characters are kind of just there. They don't do much. They're just in the movie. On the other hand, you have Captain Marvel, which is a lot more supporting characters that are given a lot more to do. For example, you have Samuel Jackson returning as Nick Fury, and I loved him in this movie. I liked seeing a younger version of the character that isn't as serious as he is in the other movies. He's much more comedic in this movie, and I really love the banter that these two had. It was really cool seeing this kind of buddy cop-esque uh, relationship between these two characters. You also have other returning characters like Phil Coulson, who was just there for like five minutes, sadly. That really disappointed me, but it was kind of cool to see his character back. You have Talos, who is a really, really good villain that ends up becoming the good guy in the end. Uh, and I liked his character. I thought he was really great. Um, you know, Ben Mendelsohn's fantastic in pretty much every role I've seen him in. There was Goose the Cat, which stole the scenes that they were in. So yeah, this movie definitely had a lot of supporting members that I all think did a really good job. So round two is going to have to go to Shazam. As much as I love Jack Dylan Grazer, and I would say that I like him more than any of the characters in Captain Marvel, um, I just would have have to go with Captain Marvel just because there are more members and they do more stuff. Oh, oh. you want to get personal. Moving on to round three, we have the villain. So in Shazam, the villain is Dr. Savannah, played by Mark Strong, who is pretty much typecast as being a villain, but he does really good in this role. I liked him a lot. I think the most surprising thing about this character was the amount of time they actually put into his backstory. There was a good 10 minutes devoted to, you know, his origins and everything, and I loved that sequence. That part was probably my favorite scene in the entire movie. It was very dark and eerie, very creepy. Um, you can tell this is the same guy that directed Lights Out because, you know, it was a very creepy scene. It reminded me a lot of Ghostbusters with the uh, Seven Deadly Sins. They looked a lot like the statues of Zool. Um, and their voices were even the same. Like, it was really cool. I love that sequence. The Seven Deadly Sins were terrifying in this movie. Um, besides that, his villain was pretty cliche and over the top, um, but I thought that the motivation was there, and that backstory really helped him become a better character. On the other hand, you have Captain Marvel, which has kind of two villains in a way, depending on how you look at it. I already brought up Talos earlier, who ends up becoming a good guy, but when he is a villain, He's great. I mean, you know, I think he was really intimidating. He was better than the majority of MCU villains, um, you know, that we've had. Um, so I thought he was a pretty big standout character in the movie, but like I said, he ends up becoming the good guy. Um, and then the other villain that we get, I don't even remember his name. He sucked as a character, in my opinion. I don't even remember the actor's name. Uh, all I know is that he was in Fantastic Beasts 2, which I haven't seen, by the way. Um, but yeah, really didn't like the villain um, in the end. Thought he was very underwhelming and definitely one of the weakest villains in the MCU in my opinion. So round three is pretty easy for me. It's going to have to go to Shazam just because I thought that the backstory was really there and I just liked the villain. Um, like I said though, Talos was great as well. Um, it's just that he ends up becoming a good guy so it's kind of hard to judge if I consider him a villain or not. But yeah, so I'm going to have to give round three to Shazam. You're like a bad guy, right? Oh, cause you know that I'm basically invincible. So you know- Hi, my name is- What? My name is- My name is- Moving on to round four, we have the action. So in a superhero movie, one of the most important things is the action sequences. It's what the majority of average moviegoers go to the theater to see these movies for. And I thought that both of these movies had kind of underwhelming action sequences when compared to the other films in their franchise. I'll start off with Shazam first. The highlight of this movie is definitely the relationship between Billy and his other friends. So 
you know, a lot of this movie wasn't really about the action sequences, it wasn't the highlight of the film, it wasn't even really shown in the trailers that much. There are a few cool action sequences in this movie, I liked it when Shazam and the villain were just flying around punching each other, it wasn't like Man of Steel where they're like, you know, blowing up a whole city and killing like hundreds of people, um, it was, it was well done, the CGI wasn't the best, but it was enjoyable to watch, and I really liked the final fight sequence between the seven deadly sins and the kids, that was a really cool sequence in my opinion. Um, so yeah, the fight sequences were a little bit underwhelming, but they were so cool for the most part. On the other hand, you have Captain Marvel, which definitely had a lot more action sequences, but then again, they were also just pretty underwhelming in my opinion. I thought that these were some of the more poorly shot fight sequences in the MCU. Um, a lot of them were just like very shaky cam looky and kind of quick cuts and everything. It wasn't exactly filmed the best in my opinion. And then you just have Captain Marvel flying around and blowing up ships without taking any hits. It just kind of made her feel overpowered without her actually having any weakness, which I wasn't a fan of. So I'm gonna have to give this round to Shazam. You could actually see what was happening, and it was just more enjoyable. Uh, by the way, yes, Shazam has already won this battle, by the way. It's already gotten three points. Um, but let's just go on to the final round to see who wins. Well, you already know, but like to see who wins that round. On to round five, we have the story. So I've kind of already glossed over this throughout the video, um, talking about it when I was referring to Billy Batson and his character, um, but I'll still very briefly explain it. Billy Batson is a 14-year-old who becomes a superhero after meeting a wizard, and, you know, he just learns a lot of things about himself in this movie. On the other hand, you have Captain Marvel, which is the story about this girl who forgets her past and she is currently fighting an alien species. So, both of these sound kind of generic at first, um, but I do think they have a lot more to offer um, than they just do up front. Like with Shazam, the relationships with the characters were definitely the highlight of that film for me. I really love seeing, you know, the character development that they gave to Billy. It was really great. Um, whereas with Captain Marvel in their hand, I just didn't really think there was much development with the character. I didn't find the story the most interesting. The whole idea of her remember, uh, trying to remember her past wasn't exactly handled the best in the movie, in my opinion. It was kind of poorly edited, um, and I just wasn't a big fan of that whole storyline, kind of unveiling her past. I didn't feel very attached to it, and once she does discover her past, it didn't feel like there was any payoff. She wasn't like, you know, like, oh my god, I know who I am now. She was just kind of like, okay, and it just didn't really do much for me. I wasn't a huge fan of that. So I'm going to have to give the final round to Shazam. Uh, you know, obviously the movie already won the fight, um, but... You know, I, I thought I would still do one more round, obviously. So there you go, guys. Those are my thoughts on Captain Marvel and Shazam as movies. Both really good films, in my opinion. Um, definitely surprises for me, personally. Um, I went into Shazam not really knowing what to expect. Came out loving it. Uh, went into Captain Marvel expecting to kind of find it mediocre. Came out thinking it was great. So both surprises, in my opinion. Um, and both pretty solid films. So thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you all next time.